We produce top quality fruits. We don't put fruit that doesn't make our, uh, make our standards in a box. So on this farm for LMB Groves, the company, this is our home farm on 15 acres. It's a very diverse, many crops on this farm. Um, but in the area, in a five mile radius, we have nine other locations that are conventional. Some we lease and some we own. We're doing all of our conventional packing at another facility on another farm. This farm has become a sleepy organic farm. We only pack here what we produce here, which is a lot easier for me as a producer. I don't have to keep, well, I do have to keep two sets of records, but one set of records is here and one set of records is out there. As it is, farming is pretty risky, organic or conventional. Um, we're subject to the whims of the marketplace, to varying yields, to insect and pest pressure, to hurricanes, of course, and freezes, which we can battle. Um, but transitioning first in this grove, now we're five years in, and then thinking about other groves, this has made more sense to me as a conventional producer, because we've really been farming now for, I'm proud to say, uh, 35 years. I planted the first trees here in 1980. Uh, we've been through a lot of iterations in this grove. But when I look back, I say, well, these crops have done well, and this crop has done well, and this crop has done well. Now there's a lot of players in this crop. So we need to change things up and continually change things up by making this our experimental grove with the wide range of crops. It, it's made a lot of sense for us. The economics of transitioning and the economics of organic farming, I, I have to say, I didn't give it a lot of thought. I just felt like my home farm should be an organic farm. It just feels right. It feels right when I walk on the ground. It feels right when I build beds. It feels right when my hands are in the worms. It just suits my temperament at this stage in my horticultural career. The economics, it, it, it costs more to be an organic farmer. Um, you know, we have to get organic fertilizers, compost and manures in one ton bags on pallets. And when our trees are young and our beds are young, we're putting up by hand. We can machine ply it otherwise, but it's expensive material. It costs more to control weeds, a whole lot more. But the weeds that come back afterwards, it's a whole different mix of plants. I'm in a pretty unique position because within three years, tree crops that I'm growing in outlying groves can be organic if I make this decision. But it's, it's a difficult decision because the economics of growing organically have been, it's just a lot more expensive. Okay, so I can't just say, okay, we're going to take 100 acres of production and turn it organically when we're just finding our way on this 15 acres of production and changing up the recipe as to the crops that we grow. So we're giving it some thought and we'll probably do one crop at a time in outlying fields. When we go direct to consumer, we're seeing a huge interest in organics. For my wholesale distributors, there is no difference. Um, I'm sorry to say at this point in time. I will have some organic marketers as we come up in production on some of these crops and then we'll see about whether we're seeing a price differential. Two of my kids, and we have four kids, work farmers markets. Uh, one does with her husband on a Sunday in a, in a nice upscale area in South Miami. And she has a following, so she produces uh, guacamole, she produces dehydrated fruit, she fillets organic jackfruit, she has organic bananas there which get a premium price. The passion fruit that we grow here by hand pollinating, she's making a dragon passion smoothie, so every tablespoon of that passion fruit concentrate is, is worth money, more so than selling an individual fruit at four or five dollars, which amazes me. So we're forced to reinvent ourselves in all of our farms at all times. But this old formula of just going to my wholesaler, she pre-cools, she sends it up the East Coast and we compete with smaller size fruit, doesn't seem to work anymore. We're still having the same low prices even with a quality product. Transitioning organic is a reinvention of what we're already producing. It's presenting it differently. We think that we can add value to some of our crops and extend the season of availability because we have peak production and generally lower prices during that time. But if we can spread that out and have frozen fruit or dehydrated fruit or mixed dehydrated fruit or potpourris, whatever it may be, I think we can add some value to what we already produce. And we're going to have to do that in order to stay competitive. 
I'm considering transitioning on other outlying farms. I just haven't taken the big giant step yet to say this date certain is when we are starting our transition. But I think it's going to have to be when the trees are really green and the markets are really poor and we're saying, okay, something now has to change and we can change it. And then you have to manage your tree canopies even better when you're an organic grower, right? You have to be more attentive to the minor element nutrition, um, which is very difficult on our high pH soils. We have to be in touch with iron, zinc, manganese, magnesium, which I consider one of the big three. Anyhow, every step of the way, we have to think about the nutrition, the canopy management, and then ultimately the other end, how are we gonna have a more valuable product? The next generation, aren't, we're first generation family farmers, right? So my eldest daughter and my youngest child, who's my son in his 20s, are both interested in taking on the responsibilities of running the farms. Although I'll be running the farms along with them for hopefully the next 35 years. So 35 years behind us, 35 years in front of us, I think they'll be more inclined to put all of their energies into the family farm operation if we transition more of the farms to be organic and essentially become 100% organic.